Okay. I think what Michael's asking is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, where do plan of action and milestones fit in to the risk management framework process? Is that your question? So first off, let's explain quickly what plan of action and milestones are. Plan of action and milestone is a process used when you cannot implement a security control. So for example, let's say let's say that we couldn't implement this I just randomly clicked something. This is a security control. Vulnerability ID 63335 on Windows 10. And it deals with Windows remote management client must not use basic authentication. Right? Cuz that's this is a weakness and it tells us how to fix it. Let's say that in our case, we couldn't, for whatever reason, we could not implement this. I'll give you a reason why. We couldn't implement this control because we're on a legacy system. We're in a legacy system. We need risk management. We need remote management. But the legacy system doesn't allow us to have more than just basic authentication. So we're stuck with this until the organization has the money and time to fix it. So in this case, we would use something called a plan of action and milestone. That means we have to plan what action we're going to take with milestones, with steps to get there, with a time frame and a point of contact. We're saying we can't fix it now, but we will fix it in the future. Now, I'm preaching to the choir because a lot of you guys already know what a plan of action and milestone is. But just in case you didn't, there's the explanation for it. So this plan of action milestone looks many different ways. Sometimes it looks like a spreadsheet. Sometimes it looks like a PDF form. It just depends on how the organization does it. Sometimes it's in a database like EMAS or like Exacta or something, and they have an automated process where when you put all the information and you hit a submit, it goes to the system owner, and then the system owner approves it, and then it goes on to the CIO, and then it goes, and so on and so forth. So you understand what a plan of action and milestone is. It's a receipt to fix something in a future day by a certain person at a certain time frame. That's what it is. Where does it fit in this scope of things? So here's the thing. Somebody just said monitoring, and I would say the answer to that is yes, that's true. However, it can really go in any one of these controls, and let me explain. Any one of these steps can have plan of action and milestone, including prepare, and I'll explain why. So let's say you have a new system and you're going to categorize the system, right? And right away, right away, you guys know there's certain things you're not going to be able to do this year. You're going to be able to implement the system this year, but you're not going to be able to do certain things in the same year. You might know ahead of time when you're preparing that you're gonna, you may have to do a plan of action, a milestone. So right there, you can start drafting like, okay, we all know we can't do this particular thing, but we can get the system to a certain level prior to production. We already know we, we can do a plan of action milestone, right? So that's one way that you, in the very beginning, you might already know we have to do one, right? And then when it goes to production, you're like, here it is right here. Everything works except this one thing. We couldn't get it done. We couldn't get more than a basic authentication for remote management, whatever, right? And, and then the organization has to either accept it or they could say, nope, we're not, we're not taking no plan of action milestones for this. You guys need to fix it right now. Or do you have alternatives for this? Because this isn't going to work for us. So that's one place where you could have it. Control, selected controls. Yeah, this is a big one too. So let's say you, you have the system. You already know what controls are going to be put in place. You guys start putting all the controls in place and there's one control you can't do. You can't do this one. Before you even implement it, you already know the system can't do it, right? That might also start a plan of action and milestone. Implementation is another place that's big for plan of action and milestones. Let's say you start actually implementing those security controls. You get to that one security control you can't do, or two or three or whatever controls. You would do a plan of action and milestone in the implementation step because you couldn't put this one control in or several controls or whatever the case may be. Now, here's another one. Assessment of the controls. Where would you use why? Think to yourself, why would you have to use a plan of action and milestone on this one? Now, 
Think about it. So I've had to do this one many times. <laughs> the ones that I'm monitoring, so Hardly is right. Yeah, monitoring, that's a big one. But the other big ones for me have been assessing the control and implementation of control. We had to, oh crap, we can't do this. Oh, oh what are we going to do? Well, it looks like we had to do a plan of action to Milestone. And nobody wants to do it because it's like herpes, man. It just keeps coming back. Plan of action and milestones suck. It's like an STD. You can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's an STD you can't get rid of. But it's better than nothing. They're not always bad, so I'm speaking bad on them. But plan of action and milestone is good for your organization because it's saying here's what we're going to do. So anyway, plan of action and milestone for assessing the controls have come to me when we've – the whole organization, me, the system – engineers, the admins, we're like, okay, finally we got it done. We're done with this system. We're ready to get an assessment. The assessors come in, right? And then they do a scan. And they're like, well, everything was good except this one control. And we're like, what? Yeah, this one control right here, this, this remote management control, this one right here, we ran a scan on it and we're seeing that you guys have only basic authentication, which is not, that's, what are you guys going to do about it? And we're like, oh, Okay, we'll have to do a plan of action and milestone for that, you know. And they'll say, okay, well, write us up the plan of action and milestone. We'll include it in the package before it goes forward to get authorized. So those are all the steps that I've seen plan of action and milestones have to be implemented. It just depends on what's going on, right? Because it's just a process when you can't remediate a specific control and then you're just going to document that you couldn't do it. And of course... Hardly brought up a great point. Monitoring is probably the one that you're going to find do most of the plan of action milestones on. Keeping it completely 100, that's what happens. Monitoring, continuous monitoring is continuously scanning, continuously looking at configurations, continuously looking at documents, continuously doing a process of evaluations and interviews and all kinds of stuff like that, right? And you just happen, you might just be happen to be reading through your recent policy, security policy, and realize, oh man, we don't have wireless. Why? Plan of action and milestone. So plan of action and milestone normally comes in the continuous monitoring phase. As you're getting your assessments, as you're doing, going through your normal checks, and you're like, man, we don't have this. Okay, we got to implement this plan to actually get that done. And I hope that answered your question, Michael. Um, let me see. San AB says, SC... S-E-M's. Okay, I'm getting another quest, request for S-C-E-S-C-M. Okay, yeah, I'll look into that one. I'll look into that one. I have a feeling I know what that, what it is. And I'm... Hardly says, so we can go into production without all of our controls implemented. You can, I, and I, I've done it before. Like, I've been in organizations where we did not have all of our controls implemented. We had to have a plan of action and milestone. And as long as the, uh, the authorizing official approves of it and accepts the risk, then yeah, you can do it. Normally they don't allow like high level controls, like high level vulnerabilities. Like let's say you had, um, you had a vulnerability that, let's, let's take this one. Let's take this, this example that we had before. This one is dealing with Windows remote management client not using, must not use basic authentication. Let's say that you, this is a critical control because this system is in the DMZ and it has extra exposure so people can see it. It's on the outside of your protected network, right? So it, this is like, this becomes like a very serious control. And you guys have done a plan of action and milestone on it, haven't seen it. You're like, yeah, the assessor saw this. We're going to go ahead and do a plan of action milestone. That's all we can do at this point. We don't have the funds. We don't have the time. We're working on other things. We're going to go ahead and submit our package, our system to the authorizing authority. And I'm sure we're going to get approved, right? The authorizing authority might say, this is a critical vulnerability. I'm not going to approve this. But these other things that you guys have, like this authentication, auditing feature has not turned on yet. That's fine. But... This one is critical. I'm not going to sign off on this. You guys need to fix this. So they may not accept the risk. So it depends. It really depends on the organization. But I've had some get past where the, all the controls were not implemented.
So I would say the answer is yes to that one. All right, let me see before I let you guys go if there's any other questions. I realize I'm having a few false endings here. I keep saying I'm going to leave and then I answer more questions. But anyway, by the way, if you want to contact me, that's my contact information. If, you, if you're asking for something specific like you want me to look at your review or even update your, your help you with your resume, if you have bought one of my courses, then I will totally do that for you. Other than that, I will do it for, uh, for vets out there. If you happen to be a veteran, I will totally help you out with your resume. If you're wanting me to help you out, just go ahead and go over to ComboCourses.com. Here's the courses right here. And I will help you if you have bought one of my courses. Whatever questions you have, unlimited questions for now until I get too busy to where I can't do it anymore. So this is a great time to, to ask me all the questions and use me and abuse me right now until until I'm so busy that I can't that it's hard for me to help anybody without taking money or something okay I got a couple more issues here more questions heartily says and does it work same for Federamp controls yes to answer your question the last time I did a Federamp and I can't speak for all organizations by the way heartily but the last organization which was a federal organization by the way we did Federamp and we had some that didn't meet certain controls were not met. But there were smaller controls. It was like little things like we had, oh man, what was it, MA3 or something. We didn't have regular maintenance or something like that where the vendor didn't have, we didn't have enough maintenance because the vendor, something happened to do with the vendor. So we didn't meet the control, but we had a plan of action, a milestone of when it will be fixed. We sent it up to the authority, authorizing authority, and she she approved it. So, so the answer is still yes for FedRAMP. FedRAMP, what I found is FedRAMP wasn't treated much different from all the other stuff we did, with the exception of dealing with some of the cloud issues, and then we had to go through another organization. But that the or, other organization, FedRAMP organization, I, I don't recall like what the name of it was off the top of my head. But that FedRAMP organization had to look at all the stuff that we had submitted and we had our own local authorizing process that we had to go through. So that was the only difference with FedRAMP. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce, you're valuable. Thank you. Invaluable. Awesome. Uh, Michael says, please see my email about poems. No, 3-P-A-O-S. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking of and, and couldn't remember the name of it. That's it. So well, it really wasn't that much different than what we we were doing. We had our own internal thing that we had to go through, but then you had to send it to the three P A O S who had their own assessment process and they had their own like they were also looking through the controls and and all that kind of stuff. So that was the the biggest difference that I saw. I was kind of like afraid the first time we did frame ramp. I was like, oh man, what is this new process? Turns out it really wasn't that much different. All right, yeah, Michael, I'll take a look at your email. I may have already addressed it. I did a, you, you asked a question, a couple questions that I've done specific videos for. So um, if you haven't seen those videos, then um, or if I didn't answer them correctly, then I will get back to you on that. I'll read your email. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate everyone.